Hello viewers, I am finally back on Gran Turismo 7. You thought I'd given up on the game, didn't you? So we're going to be jumping back into the uh, daily race here. Of course, it's been a while because Gran Turismo kind of stopped working. Polyphony took a while to acknowledge it. But finally, we're back. Just checking the last time I played this game and it was the 20th of September. Not very good for a Gran Turismo YouTuber, is it? Okay, guys, here we go. I'm starting dead last. 16th out of 16. You're going to have to excuse how bad I'm about to be here. I have not played the game in a while. Getting all my excuses in nice and early. I'm just behind Cheetah Cheetah. That's uh, very encouraging, isn't it? Seven laps of Road Atlanta. Group three, let's go. Starting in 16th out of 16. Decided to start right at the back. No qualifying done here. But yes, welcome back to a Gran Turismo 7 video. It's been a while, near enough a month since the last one. And thank you for sticking around. Of course, been very busy recently with real life racing. And let's not forget Forza Motorsport just released as well. So it's been pretty full on. Now coming through here, this guy's going to continue turning right straight into Barry R. Straight into the wall. Nice early appearance for Barry. Now we can laugh all we like about that guy there crashing into the wall. But moments later, I did the exact same thing. And Barry R has been met twice in just a matter of moments. And so I turned this race into a practice session, trying to set some somewhat consistent times, as you can see. So I thought, okay, well, the pace is there, and you know, after not playing the game for a while, I have lost a bit of bit of pace, if I had any to begin with. And at the end, coming through to finish last, but actually not, because this guy kind of just forgot how to drive the final corner. That was a complete disaster, I think it's fair to say. Merch store is still open for those who want to take a look at the items, but we're going to jump into race number two. This time we'll try not to crash. I think that's a good idea, isn't it? And technically I didn't crash, but as you can see from this response, there was something else very wrong, and that was having wet tyres on the car. Why does it keep changing them back? Medium. I am so stupid. Okay, guys, this time, let's make sure. You see that's, that says medium there, doesn't it? Medium. We've got the medium tyres on. Okay, this time with the actual proper tyres on the car, we could actually have a proper race, hopefully. As this guy gets the earliest penalty I've ever seen. Already, pretty much before he even crossed the start line, got himself a penalty. It's not the most ideal start. Here starting 15th with much glare in my eyes, yellow flag, and it's max power off in the gravel. And... Um, this race was actually quite tricky. Road Atlanta and Group 3 cars. This BMW felt quite loose, I would say, on the rear end. And it was actually a very close race. Lots of very close um, qualifying times, especially in the middle of the pack. Now, of course, here we're going to go past this Genesis, who's serving the penalty. So that's up into 13th. Two positions gained on this first lap. That's not too bad. This is the beginning of lap number two. There's a Mercedes AMG, very weirdly, on the grass. And as we come through the exit of turn one, I am just going to lift off a bit, try to avoid him. Didn't quite manage it. I think he dropped a couple of positions there. Thankfully, didn't spin out. A little bit later on, this is still lap number two. Up behind our fellow BMW user. And I think the Genesis was the main go-to car for this race, but there were actually quite a few different cars being, being used. This was a BMW versus BMW battle down the hill into the final chicane and I was going to be late on the brakes up the inside and that's 11th place incredible scenes here the crowd goes absolutely wild I think there was a bit of contact there with the car behind thankfully <laughs> heart in mouth moment tried to recovering that tried to recover that up the inside of the Porsche on the following lap so that's 10th position we've gained five so far in this one but it was about to come crashing down here as uh, took a bit too much kerb. Rear end was quite light on this car and Barry R has been met once again. So this really was not going to plan, I think it's fair to say. And you can probably see that my skill level was very low. Skill issue, you could say. Now, max power, they're going very wide and at least we had a bit of a battle here to not finish in dead last. So... Okay, there's still something to fight for, I suppose. And coming down towards the chicane, 
we had a yellow flag, which I completely ignored. It says overtaking is prohibited. But I mean, does anyone pay attention to that on this game? Probably not. And I didn't there. Hell up in the 15th. Looking perhaps the 13th here. On the on the final lap, lap 7 of 7. Max Power trying to come back at me. Doesn't quite make it happen. As we come through the chicane. Looks like it's going to be a 14th place. But, well, yes, but technically no. I spin... But also, Max Power spins, <laughs> and so I recover 14th. What a weird finish to the race that one was. Wow, why am I so bad? I have like zero confidence with the rear end of that car. It just wants to slide so much, and I don't quite have the feel back for this game yet. <laughs> with that in mind, I'm going to skip the next race, and I should try and qualify. Because this is normally what makes me a bit more consistent. And so, setting a first lap there of an 18.5. Before going back to my customary ways of spinning, turning left into a right-hander, and then, you know, making lots of mistakes. Let me tell you, this was a painful little session. But eventually I managed to actually learn how to drive and do some proper turns and all that stuff. And this was my best lap. Uh, so up by this point to so an 18-0 and Road Atlanta is really about getting in a flow and carrying speed through corners especially through this sequence and then this corner it's all about getting on the grass the caretaker of Road Atlanta hates hates all of us for driving over the grass but it's got to be done if you want the lap time and you can see already ahead of the ghost the ghost starting 0.3 seconds in front so this should hopefully be a sizable improvement this corner here is the bane of my life. I've never been able to really get that one dead right. Uh, taking it okay there. Just the final chicane left to go. Breaking just before that first line. Getting over the grass on the inside if we can. Then up into third gear for stability on the exit of the chicane. We've stayed ahead of the ghost. So it should be an improvement by a couple of tenths. And indeed it was. A 117.7 on the line. Okay guys, knife on the grid. Hopefully this time I can finish without crashing. Imagine that. That'd be that'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? Let's try and let's try and do that. So yeah, main objective for this one is just to try and finish a race with no incidents. And that's proving to be impossible at the moment. So knife on the grid, a little bit further forwards. As I kind of touched upon earlier, it was very competitive in the mid-grid here. So if I'd improved my qualifying time by two tenths. So let's say a 17.5, a low 17.5, I would have been about fourth or third on the grid. Such was how close it was here in the mid-pack. Nice and competitive, so it's always good to come back to Gran Turismo and have the nice competitive races that you can have, especially in Group 3, probably the most competitive class in the game, I would say. And so, getting back into the swing of things, and it is going to be a big excuse, guys, but... When you haven't been playing a game for that long, it is it takes a while to get back to exactly where you were before. And so that's my main excuse, really. That's my main excuse. Now here, staying in ninth, but as you can kind of gather from the cars in front, it's getting a little bit chaotic. As I go a little bit too late on the brakes into the back of the Genesis, which is dressed as a Bentley. Before Sharky does a nice little 180. Quite a lot of spins, quite a lot of people crashing and spinning in this race. And most of the time it's me, but that time it wasn't. Now, crossing the line, McLaren in tow here. Into turn one, very fast right-hander. Keeping that minimum speed up as high as possible. And it's not easy to really overtake through this corner. And it's amazing when they do the Petit Le Mans, which they did very recently. That they can race multi-class around this sort of track. It's a short track and it's twisty as well. Apart from the long straight at the back end of the track. But uh, it's kind of a miraculous race that they can run that thing. Now here, things are about to get quite sour, you could say. It's about to unravel, as the infamous saying goes. Uh, the Shadow Realm may well be approached in the next couple of moments. Because here, there's a bit of argy-bargy going on. And we, we get side by side with this Frenchman. And we're getting into the slipstream with the cars in front. And before you know it, I'm turning right on a straight. And smashing into the wall once again for probably about the 852nd time in this video and that's just really not ideal is it quite suboptimal i think you could say and unfortunately that puts me right back into this pack i've lost a good crucial couple of seconds 
and many positions as well down to 13th what a disaster i mean this session was the disaster uh, the session from hell an absolute disaster looking up the inside of the porsche not quite close enough to get it on this occasion at least there was something to fight for in this race and um, just fighting to keep the car on the track is the first thing and i suppose at least the crash it wasn't necessarily self-inflicted so there is that i didn't spin off on my own so i suppose we're improving slowly it took someone else to spin me out for me to hit the wall which is moving up in the world i think now onto the back of the the greek driver here in the porsche we got a good run through turn six and seven i think they are but i can't be bothered to count them heading down the hill up the inside a bit of a puff of smoke up in front you can see a car going across the grass there's a bit of a uh, argy bargy here on the exit as the um, the Italian there gets slowed down. So two positions. We're about to gain another two here. Look at this. The green car that went across the grass going very slow. Three abreast into turn one. Not ideal. But it was ideal for me because I was on the inside. So I get two positions again. That's four positions in the last couple of corners. And so the fight back is on. The fight back is very much on here. So I take way too much curb there through turn two. Or is it three? I don't know. You tell me. And then... On this corner you see uh, the guy in seventh with a penalty wasn't sure exactly how big of a penalty it was normally it would be a 0.5 but it seemed to be a bit more than that as he slowed right down it's the mclaren driver and i'm back into eighth place catching up with danny boy young trying to get one more position this has been a solid recovery i would say after that initial incident the pace is not too bad and um this guy in the in the honda nsx it seems that this guy was very quick through the corners and you see here he gets a really good run the bmw feels a little bit clunky through that turn and that gap opens up and i was quicker in a straight line you know i've got slipstream as well but i did gain but not enough to go for this move so having to settle in and, and preserve eighth place for now with one lap remaining in the race and by the end you see i wasn't really close enough on the following lap so i couldn't really do anything Hoping for one more position, maybe, from someone forgetting how to turn through this final corner. And uh, it almost looked like Max Power did that, but um, finishing eighth in the end for this one. Which was okay, but still somewhat of a disaster as we look on the replay here uh, from the exterior view. Yep. Cheers for that, mate. Nice one. Congratulations. So you can see it here. I think he's just trying to get in the slipstream. Just moves across, I'm still there. And then, in case you think, okay, maybe it's an accident. Maybe not. <laughs> okay, guys, this is it. Come on. Let's have a good race. <laughs> Actually get to the end without any incidents. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? To finish a race without crashing once. Imagine that. Imagine if Super GT could actually do that. And I'm sure if it happens, you'd tell your children and your grandchildren all about it the day that super gt did it so here we go once again 11th on the grid this time and it definitely looks like i need to improve my qualifying time i only did about five or six laps and so you know can definitely find more time but so we're gonna have to make do with what we've got 11th place on the grid let's try and make up some positions here through the s's Quite up close behind the Nissan GTR. Is anyone spinning off? Not quite yet. Max power up in front, slowing down with the penalty. So we should hopefully gain one more position here, or at least one position. And it really does get very close here. People trying to show respect, I think, as much as possible. But we're definitely on the lookout for our French friend who had every intent to murder us. As uh, he's a couple of positions up the road. So Max Power there serving the penalty. So up into the top 10 for the first time in this one. The guy in 8th place there, a little bit slow. But you see here, the guy in 9th is just about to spin off to the left. But look ahead at our French friend who has a bit of an incident. And then the German is having none of it. He says goodbye and spins him off into the grass. And as you can see, I was absolutely mortified by that. I was so so heartstruck for the poor Frenchman who did nothing wrong clearly 
Now anyway, nice little dive bomb there up the inside into turn one, up into seventh position. We're moving up this grid quite nicely there, started outside the top ten. This is lap number four then, trying to keep up with the battle for the top five. And uh, oh, lo uh, loose on the back end here of the BMW, going up the inside into turn six and too late on the brakes and uh, he's going to perform the old switcheroo and get the position back but then disaster struck once again and my career on Gran Turismo is clearly going down the drain guys I'm very very sorry indeed maybe I should have given up on Gran Turismo 7